Eric's looking for you. Okay, can we uh, find a seat so we can get started, please? We'll do the chair stuff first. We, the chairs have some things to say first. Oh, okay. and then Okay, as usual, the first thing uh, is blue sheets. We have one clipboard going around. Please make sure you sign it. Second thing is we need a Jabber scribe and a note taker. We have one note taker. We have one note taker. Okay, need a Jabber scribe. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, the intellectual property that you must be aware. And the note well. Okay, so the blue sheets are, well, one is circulating. We have uh, note taker and Russ will be in Java. 
So this is the agenda for today's session. Uh, we'll do some administrative stuff at the beginning and then we'll focus into the main two working group documents. The one about IPv6 over .11 OCV and then the plan statement and use cases document. And then time allowing, we will have a short presentation on uh, neighbor discovery for IPv6 and another one on TLS using ATS, but this is time permitting. So, on the, we have one slide on the liaison, so we Russ, you can explain. Uh, yes, we uh, got a liaison statement from ITU SG16, uh, basically informing us of some work they're doing. They, um, have, this was posted to the mail list a, a little while ago. We received it on uh, the 3rd of September. They just want to make us aware of this work, and if we have anything uh, to say about it, they'd love for uh, to hear about it. But basically, they're calling for volunteers uh, to participate in this focus group. If you're interested, you don't need to come through us. Just talk to the ITU directly. Focus groups don't uh, have the same formal uh, membership requirements as some other ITU activities. So. Um, if you look at that uh, liaison statement uh, and you're interested, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Raj. So, short working group status update. So, we have, as you know, two documents in working group process. The one, the first one is on the transmission of IPv6 over EO2.11 OCV. Um, this document has been stuck for a while due to some six month raise issues, concerns. Uh, we'll see just after this uh, a presentation from the authors and then we will discuss how to move forward on, on this document. And then we have another document that is the plan statement and use cases document that has been through some reviews, but we still need some, some additional reviews to, to make this document move to the next stage. We will discuss that later as well. So this is the status as you can see we are late on on the additional on the original deadlines. We are very much aware of that and we will we'll see how to, to actually speed up things during the meeting. So on the next steps we will as I mentioned discuss uh, the the review has been done on the OCV document and, and see whether the six man race issues still remain. Um, we believe that there are things that are still to be done and we are discussing some some ways of of uh, approaching this or addressing this. Maybe adding some uh, new editor may, may help but this is still under discussion. And But we believe that this document is not ready yet and um, we will need to do some work and then submit to the AG but not before the six month basically agrees with the document, as stated in our charter that the six month has to review the document that we produced. This on the first one. On the second one, on the survey problem statement use cases document, we got some reviews since last ITF meeting, and that's very good because we managed to get something that is a good starting point, as actually some of the reviewers mentioned. But we need, we do need additional reviews. I mean, this is a starting point, but we need more mature reviews on this iteration, not only to improve the quality of the document to a level that is good enough to for publication, but also to to provide some uh, proof that the working group has energy to do additional stuff. Because otherwise, there is no point of having a problem statement document if there is no problem then to be solved. So we really knew the we really need at least two additional detailed reviews, so it's not about uh, typos, editorial kind of review, but really on the, on, the, on the content of the document before ITF 104. And we need a new version of the document before the meeting. And by before the meeting, I don't mean two days before the submission deadline, but at least one full iteration before. So basically two additional versions before IT 104. Otherwise, uh, I guess we have been waiting 
for quite a long time, so we will be maybe forced to drop the document if there is no energy on, on this. So we will discuss that later as well. And that's basically it from, from our side, so let's move to the next point in the agenda, uh, Nabil. Hi, this is uh, Nabil Benamar from Morocco. I'm an uh, ISOC uh, returning uh, fellow to ITF. So I'm presenting our draft uh, transmission of IPv6 uh, packets over IEEE 802.11 networks operating in mode outside the context of basic service sets. So uh, Uh, since uh, the last ITF meeting that was held in uh, Montreal, the draft is uh, updated with uh, all recent comments since that uh, ITF, including comments from six-man working group from Eric and from the human rights protocol consideration that uh, help us to consider all this uh, uh, statement and to include it in the, the current version of the, the draft. So as part of efforts of the human rights protocol consideration, Amelia has uh, reviewed the human rights consideration and suggested to remove the reference to that RFC, which is uh, 8280, uh, because it doesn't need to be listed in the reference as it's an IRTF research group documents and it's, uh, the review is meant to be helpful and uh, in no case uh, a mandatory. So the main uh, comment uh, that we have received from uh, six men are related to, uh, in part, to the neighbor discovery. So the main uh, neighbor discovery challenge was suggested by six men and by uh, Mr. Eric uh, Nordmark. They were addressed in version uh, 26 and 30. 30 is the latest version that we have. The respective changes are listed in the change log, so if you want to have more details about all the changes that we have uh, between uh, version 26 and 30, you can just compare the, the change logs. So they are in uh, for uh, in uh, in 30, in the uh, version 30, a clar clarification on the reliability of ND over OCB and over 82.11 links. So we added the following paragraph. The neighbor discovery protocol is used over 802.11 OCB links. The reliability of the ND protocol over 82.11 OCB is the reliability of the delivery of ND multicast messages. This reliability is the same as the reliability of delivery of ND multicast messages over 802.11 links operated with uh, BSS ID. So we have added that paragraph and we are uh, waiting for comment from Eric. <laughs> so, okay, comment from from six men. So in the, so for uh, the 26th version, so we moved text. Okay. Uh, so if you go back to the, the yeah. slide. So the, uh, Eric, not Mark. Um, so the second, Paragraph is sorry. Second sentence is actually incorrect. Right, two things is incorrect. One is ND uses both unicast and multicast. Two, ND actually sends multiple messages. So if a single message is lost, it's you're not dead, right? So the wording here could need some use some improvements. Um, the thing that's important to keep in mind for OCB is that unicast is as unreliable as multicast which is different than Wi-Fi, right? What people have done on Wi-Fi is saying that, okay, if you can switch to unicast, we're better off because it's more reliable, we have X. But, but it might make sense to state that fact that OCB, because it doesn't have X, because it doesn't have associations, unicast is as bad as multicast or as good, whatever it is. Right? But, but you should actually fix that second sentence because I think it will actually confuse, continue to confuse people. Okay, thank you, Eric. So you suggest to uh, rewrite the second sentence in this paragraph. Yeah. To focus also on um, unicast. 
Yes, and you, you could actually weave it in. I could suggest some words, but that's okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Back to uh, version uh, 26 of the draft. So we moved the text from Slack section and from design consideration appendix about privacy into a new privacy consideration subsection of the security section, as had been suggested by uh, in uh, in the mailing list. Reformulated the Slack and ID section to stress only uh, link locals uh, that can use UI64. Removed the GOP Wireshark explanation or reformulated the Slack and LL sections. Continuing on the comment from Six Man, we added a brief mention of the need of use of uh, Link Local, clarified the text about MAC address changes, dropped the Donim discussion, and changed title of section describing example of packet format. For the privacy protections of vehicles, which is which has been uh, also comments that we have received from uh, Dirk and Amelia, so we added that paragraph that you can see in the. So we we need to to add this paragraph in a future uh, uh, release of the of the document. So it's uh, it's basically about the demand of for privacy protection of vehicles and drivers identifies which uh, could be granted by using a pseudonym or alias identity at the same time may hamper the required confidentiality of message and trust between participants. So that's that's all for this stuff. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nabil. So I guess you didn't get a, like a kind of the blessing from six man, right? I mean, the last revision has not been reviewed by six man as such. So we need that because I, I, I believe that the six man will not be happy with the current version either. So we need to, to probably get another review from them to highlight the, the things that need to be addressed and uh, so, so I, I, one more thing is like probably also to check with the IP wave working group to see if they're happy with the changes because I don't see like you know like the closing the loop in the working group so um, maybe we can probably do like a one week last call or something not this week but the week after I say like okay like you know are you happy with the changes that have been made since the last working group last call because I think it's pretty significant amount of changes since the last working group last call uh, so once that's done, probably I, I'll do the same process for six man to ship it over. Uh, but I think um, doing this in lockstep is probably not going to work. So we can probably close one off and then go again, do another shot. Um, because I think it's going to be very difficult to try to do a last call in both the places at the same time. Because there might be somebody who might come up, like even like stuff like, you know, Eric was talking about like some fairly obvious things that like shouldn't be controversial seem to be controversial right like some appendix or something right so i i just don't want to like you know uh, correlate these two things at the same time so like get it closed off here send it off to six man bring up the issues here again and go on so even if it takes time i think it makes more sense uh, that way okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. eric again so two things one i was looking through the six man comments and there's at least one that hasn't been addressed, which is the paragraph after the ND paragraph that refers back to that paragraph to, as the motivation for you know mobile IP, whatever. And people pointed out, I don't know when this was in the last couple of months, but that that back reference doesn't make sense given that you now change the paragraph it's referring to. So that's something that needs to be addressed. I think in general, it works well when there's email responses saying, okay, based on what you said we've changed this section to this, whether it's six months comments, the one I made, I have to go look at the diffs to actually figure out what was actually changed, right? Because the change log in the document is extremely brief. So I haven't pulled up the diffs yet to see what actually did change, but, but doing that stuff um, so that people can actually see that, okay, you did change something in response to this, or at least you responded saying, oh no, you're confused, you know, we don't need to change the document. Okay, thank you. We'll yeah, uh, so, so that that's kind of what I was implying by closing the loop, right? Like, you know, the, there's like people don't know that you made the change, like or what change you actually tried to make for a given thing. So like at least for Eric's email, right? 
like you listed, like, you know, what are the changes you made? But all the six man comments, right? There's, n there's no closure in six man for the comments that came in, right? Saying, okay, this is what we changed in the draft. This is why we're not making a change in the draft and so on for the issues that came up there, right? As far as I know, so we have uh, received many comments from six men and we we addressed all the comments because it was uh, no, it's not about addressing, it's like in the mailing list, list with uh, Carpentier and uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, exactly. So we have answered in the mailing list. You okay. can you can see in the melee. So there are some points that uh, we didn't agree. So uh, they they were not impacted in the in the draft, but we didn't uh, get other questions from them or comments from them. Okay, okay. So um, we'll just probably go through it. Like, uh, uh, would would it be useful for you, uh, Carlos and Ross, if I set up an issue tracker for this? So. You can actually keep track of the issues and close them off and and go yeah. on because i i feel it's very weird like to get an issue tracker we have to go through this like side process to get one but i can get the issue tracker for this if that you think that'll help i'm not sure the list is so long we need a issue tracker if we just compile one email that says this was your issues this is what how okay. we address them don't you think that's enough that's fine yeah okay okay perfect so then just to summarize uh the process will be, I think there are some comments pending for being updated in the draft, right? Okay. So you, you guys submit a new version with all the changes that you think at this point were necessary. You send an email summarizing all the changes you made and where those comments came from, like six months did say, say this, this is the way we have addressed the comment. If there is a comment you didn't reach an agreement, you say, like we didn't reach an agreement, so this is still open. You summarize everything. Once we have that, we go for working group last call one week in the working group. And after that, what, whatever comments we get and a new version potentially addressing that, we ask Suresh to go to six months again, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, thank you. Hello, uh, this is uh, Jeon Porzon from uh, Songyeon University in Korea. Um, you know, the bottom of this slide uh, lists up uh, our co-authors. So uh, this doc uh, document about the problem statement uh, addressing what is the uh, next uh, step for uh, IP wave uh, if we can, and also uh, show the several use cases. The actor uh, Montreal meeting, uh, we updated the two uh, versions. So, the, especially uh, the comment from uh, volunteer reviewers, uh, uh, Eric and uh, Dirk and Fran uh, Sois and uh, Michel uh, Al Alia, okay? Emilia, okay. So, except um, the Emilia, that review is a human rights review. So what is related to the human uh, rights point of view? So I read uh, her um, the review, most of a uh, focus on the security stuff. So uh, I tried to address, especially privacy issue. So I can uh, um, uh, polish up uh, our problem statement document. But other technical part, I believe, yeah, uh, I addressed. Also, uh, we agreed um, just to focus on three uh, uh, key work items. The first one is neighbor discovery. The second one is the mobility management. The third one is uh, security and privacy. So the major uh, changes uh, is uh, neighbor discovery. Uh, I would say uh, vehicular neighbor discovery, VND. So uh, last time, the Eric Nordmark uh, uh, he uh, asked the, what is definition of a, a vehicular link model. So this draft, we try to address uh, the link model. So maybe we can discuss, this is very important. The second one is uh, the neighbor discovery based uh, proactive handover to support um, the transport layer session continuity. So we can take advantage of uh, link layer parameters such as uh, received the channel power indicator and also location of RSU and its coverage. So we can 
will predict uh, when uh, the mobile vehicle uh, will uh, move out of the communication range of RCU. And the RCU also can uh, determine what is the timing to perform the handover. So we can take advantage of that information. So that is the um, second one. The uh, third one is a vehicle flow uh, network architecture. Try to clarify vehicle link model. The last one is also uh, RSU uh, network is connected to uh, vehicle cloud. So uh, I will explain one step at a time. Uh, this figure shows the vehicle network architecture. So you can see uh, the bottom, uh, we have two subnets, subnet one, uh, subnet two. So this uh, figure is very important. Um, so you can see the RSU one, RSU two, uh, two RSU are sharing uh, the same uh, prefix. So we try to uh, construct the multi-link subnet, which means one beaker V1 configured by the prefix announced by RSU one, and then it moving to another RSU uh, wireless virtual uh, link. Uh, it uh, doesn't necessarily reconfigure our game because of uh, the same multi link subnet. We try to reduce uh, address auto computation overhead, right? Because you can see usually RSU uh, will be deployed um, intersection area, sometimes the highway cases, some intermediate road uh, ways, most of the cases, the urban area, uh, the vehicular uh, people think uh, intersection is a good uh, position. So you can see the usually intersection distance is less than uh, 100 meter in the United States case. In that case, every RSU visit changing new address is not uh, efficient. So. Uh, I envision uh, we try to construct the multi-link subnet and then we can allow just a one-time um, address configuration will be enough. However, sometimes another RSU3 can have another uh, subnet prefix. So in that case, somehow we needed to perform some handover. So um, Tree uh, and I yeah, discussed the um, so mobility anchor, uh, this structure similar to uh, uh, proxy mobile IP structure, such as uh, RMA. So this one can handle uh, different uh, subnet prefix. I think that is uh, some different from uh, proxy mobile IP structure. So we try to take advantage of uh, the position of RSU and trajectory of a vehicle because a vehicle can equip with a uh, GPS navigator. So vehicle can recognize its position, speed, direction, that information periodically reported to RSU. And RSU can share that information with the neighbor RSU. Also, it can report to uh, mobility anchor. So mobility anchor is a kind of uh, controller, govern or mobility management. So I think that this is a new uh, uh, link model. Also, important thing is secondly, the vehicular case the communication between beaker to beaker should uh, B2B rather than uh, B2I and I2B. It takes time. So we support B2B also B2I simultaneously. This one is, I think, different from traditional uh, infrastructure based wireless communication. So we need to support to both. So the, this figure shows a V2I communication scenario. You can see this is the left-hand side, the beaker, in beaker network, and the right-hand side, uh, RSU, in internal uh, network. So nowadays, the, the industry, they are trying to make uh, internal network using gigabit Ethernet, providing some diagnosis or other some sensing for some uh, adaptive cruise control purposes. Many data can be generated. So we can see uh, this one is uh, moving the router, okay? It is communicated with another uh, router. Uh, this is, keep in mind, the RSU. So this interface is used to access a uh, cloud uh, connected to a mobility anchor uh, to take uh, some uh, internet services or communicate with this speaker another uh, vehicle located at another uh, subnet link, okay? So uh, we needed to uh, consider this kind of internal network as well, okay? 
Uh, second one is that the beaker to beaker case can uh, communicate each other. So in this case, uh, we can say uh, one important um, the application in the uh, driverless autonomous uh, vehicle scenario case, uh, we can learn some cruiser controller or uh, context aware navigator. They can communicate to each other to aware the neighboring vehicles, also neighboring uh, pedestrians to avoid uh, conflict or accident. So in that case, some uh, um, application learning some host to another uh, cruiser controller application learning another host within in vehicle network, they should communicate to each other. So the question is how to provide uh, these kinds of uh, communication. So that is uh, different from other existing uh, manet or other some DMN, other yes scenario, okay? So uh, I tried to clarify the link model uh, based on uh, uh, mainly from the adding node mark. So, the legacy IP version 6 neighbor discovery protocol is not suitable for vehicular wireless link because the major uh, concern is uh, symmetry in connectivity. Uh, you can see the vehicular case depending on transmission power also interference in air. So one transmission not necessarily guarantee the other uh, transmission, right? So um, asymmetry uh, in the connectivity uh, exists. And also, the lastly, you can see the multi-link subnet case, they uh, should uh, reach over, even though the multi-link subnet consists of a multiple uh, wireless link with the same prefix. So the how to handle. And also the uh, vehicular case, the vehicular add-on network case, even though uh, sometimes within some subnet domain, but maybe they disconnected because of some communication range, right? So in that case, we need to communicate uh, using RSU, relay, something like that. So, so this is very uh, different from um, traditional, the IP version six neighbor uh, discovery protocol assumptions. So we need to um, clarify. So as a result, we uh, have some new uh, features for vehicular uh, neighbor discovery. So Eric uh, suggested a uh, lightweight uh, DAD uh, using uh, ND optimization from six low fan. Six low fan, the major concern is energy consumption. So they try to avoid ND uh, broadcast. So if uh, some um, IoT device uh, requires some address, prefix case, just the uh, unicast based uh, uh, router solicitation message delivered and the router can receive and then handle using multi-hub uh, DAD. So in the same way, we take advantage of this one. Imagine you can see the one intersection area, uh, 100 over 200 vehicles moving around, they try to reconfigure. So in that case, we need to minimize uh, traffic overhead. That is, uh, I think, important. Also, it moving to another subnet Try the idea again is, uh, you can see, uh, inefficient approach. So that's why uh, we need to consider this one. So single address configuration, multi nickel subnet, I think is enough. Also the handover among RSU uh, and the MA mobility anchor can be used, support, take advantage of uh, trajectory and the position information of the vehicle. Also, we handle dynamic uh, to topology of uh, Bennett. Also, multi-link subnet forwarding, uh, we need to consider B2B or V2I, I2V. So we need to consider that one, depending on the uh, location of vehicles. Okay, um, and then let's move on uh, MAC address pseudonym for uh, privacy. So in that case, MAC address is periodically changed, affects address change IP layer. So we need to handle. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my name's Charlie Perkins. Can you go to the last slide just for a moment? Okay. Now, there's a document that's just about done in six low. It's called 60, RFC 6775 update. And I think it really deserves consideration here because there's a lot of discussion about um, how to uh, have multi-hop registration for mm -hmm. these devices. 
as well as uh, you might say some improved verification capability, mm -hmm. which might come in handy here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what is it the name Charlie, document? What was the RFC number? It's not on RFC yet. It's in the RFC editor's queue, but I mean okay. uh, they're they're finishing it. But mm -hmm. it's RFC sixty seven seventy five dash update. It's a update, six low okay. document. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just to clarify, it's an update to that RFC, so it has some additional pieces mm -hmm. uh, associated with it. So, but mm -hmm. it's It's the same model, right? It's just okay. adding some pieces. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you very much. So, the MAC address pseudonym um, case. Um, the important thing is um, current my uh, idea uh, the MAC address pseudonym case the change IP address or packed. The TCP, such as the transport layer session, uh, should be uh, the maintained, right? So we need to um, consider of that. So we can uh, take advantage of existing uh, mobility management scheme. Maybe it is not good enough. We need to uh, add more. And also, uh, V2B scenario case, prefix dissemination exchange is very important. I explained the previous uh, the slide, V2B scenario. And then mobility management. So efficient mobility management uh, simulates connectivity and timely data exchange. So we can take advantage of mobility information sharing uh, with the infrastructure load, RSU and mobility anchor and the beakers. So proactive handover can be used. So as a result, the trajectory based mobility management can be used. Okay. Nowadays, uh, every user, uh, driver, um, uh, holding a smartphone or speaker nowadays, that's yeah, the system providing the vision system. We can take advantage of that uh, mobility information for uh, mobility management. Also, uh, with that kind of prediction of the vehicle mo mobility, we can perform efficient DAD, data forwarding, and the handover, proactive manner. That is, I think, very important, unique point. And also we take advantage of a link layer parameter such as uh, receive the channel power indicator or RSSI over the uh, extra layer frame, we can uh, use it. So next uh, step is uh, Carlos mentioned that we uh, takes two intensive uh, reviewer, maybe the three, the Kundab Valley, right? Three and other expert, maybe the volunteer about the mobility and some maybe uh, Eric the review again maybe so we can uh, move out and then uh, we need to restructure and then be moving out to develop some protocol okay thank you okay thank you so for the the reviews so we need two three reviews before next ITF so you suggested three, three I don't know if you can do it okay so one thank you very much uh, um, Charlie was also mentioned. Uh, well, I don't know if mentioned. I was thinking, in Charlie. Charlie, can you take a look at the at the current version and provide some comments as well? Okay, thank you. And any other volunteer? I am Rahul Jadav uh, from Huawei Technologies. I have a question regarding the mobility uh, scenarios that you mentioned. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that Wave has done is removed some handshakes, and they have updated the authentication scheme at the lower layer, just so that it reduces additional. Uh, additional uh, RTDs, you know, that I know. And now at the above layer, with 60, uh, 6775 updates, we are going to introduce. Uh, so w w what I was wondering is, is there any information in the draft uh, which which gives this information that, you know, this is the hardbound that is kept by the wave standard? Oh, so what is your question? I cannot. Uh, OK. So yeah. let me, let Sorry, me sorry. So what is your uh, concern is about the, some security issue? No, it's not security issue. So uh, the layer two wave has changed their uh, handshake mechanism mm -hmm. so as to reduce the number of RTTs that are involved for, for certain scenarios. Right. And now we are adding those RTTs at the above layer. So what I'm trying to understand is, is there any hard bound that has been placed by the wave standard on the on what what amount of time can be spent in this uh, uh, this authentication handshake or any other handshake that is involved at the layer two. I'm just worried that at the higher layer, we are introducing those handshake 
and increasing the time bound you know okay so sure. mm. uh, so it, is there any specific considerations that you have done for that particular aspect okay that's currently as long as I uh, understand the wave case they, they are focused on v2b scenario rather than v2i mm. so because the handover usually involving the ip right so communicate uh, with some other corresponding located to some other uh, subnet so but that is that exactly uh, IP wave uh, have uh, working on that. So I think that is a no reference yet, as uh, long as I understand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Probably okay. that is a very important yeah issue. Right. So I I, I read the draft last time. I didn't see such information, but then I tried to check whether such any 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 such hard bound is placed by the wave mm. uh, standards. Mm. I didn't find anything specific, but I just wanted to know whether you right. know of something like this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So Rahul, you are saying that is more about L2 setup, the time, okay. So, but um, here we are not talking about the solution approach yet. I, I know even Paul is talking about, even though he's talking about the different mobility management approaches, we are not sure if you're going to build a layer to domain. In one approach is RSC a router or a bridge, right? Essentially in one model, we can have some higher level aggregation gateway build a large L2 domain, right? Like today how CapFab does, right? If you keep it very close to CAPAP kind of architecture, that's one we need to look at how that impacts the you know different mobility management scenarios. But if you look at RSC as more as an L3 router, then what Paul is talking about, like a handoffs and all of that, in that model we need to see how it impacts. So we haven't discussed any of the solutions. So this is just a high-level commentary at this point. This is because it's a problem statement document, these are all potential problems. But you have, I think we need to look at 1609 specs, what exactly is the issue, but uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. The three. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hello, my name is Samia Anderstadt. I wrote the human rights review um, that you put uh, to be decided. And so I would just like to have clarified for myself which parts of the uh, review um, that were difficult to understand or um, mm -hmm. why the concerns weren't incorporated. So you, you are, are you the, the Amelia, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So that is very helpful. It's firstly the privacy issue, a pin number, picture, identification number issue, other synonym. Uh, I think very helpful. I tried to address the summer part, but summer part it is look like they're not easy to. Yeah, so we can discuss. Okay, after some. That uh, would offline. be helpful. Thank okay, you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Eric, so, go ahead. Yeah. Eric, never mind. This is not necessarily a comment on this draft, but it might sort of fall in between the two drafts. And so I realized going through the various comments that, well, one thing that we haven't specified as far as I know is the base case of uh, the vehicle is talking to one RSU and a second later it's talking to another one because it drove down the road, right? And right. how does that actually perform today? And mm -hmm what sort of level of tuning is needed. You know, we have these various RA advertisement interval. We have ways of setting router lifetimes and um, reachable time and other things, right? And I don't know if anybody's done any experiments with that with sort of current code and see how does this behave if, if a new RSU shows up every second or whatever, right? I mean, even if you, 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 you're not trying to get global routing to work, but you just want to be able to ping the default router as you're driving down the road, right? That would be a useful test case to see how quickly can you actually discover that there's a new default router, you shouldn't use the old one because you lost connectivity, right? Right. And I don't think it requires protocol changes, but at least we need to figure out what sort of tuning is needed here. So right. that's mm -hmm. a lot simpler than this. Your, your mobility management here assumes that you will find out about, mm -hmm. I'm now talking to new RSU, I should stop talking to the old one. And I can run my mobility protocols on top of that, but you need to find that out in a reasonably timely manner. So, mm -hmm. I don't, has anybody done experiments with this? So actually, you know, the the current the situation about the white IP wave case, um, the at the eleven OCB driver and the you know system is not uh, popularly available. So, for example, on my lab purchased a uh, Coda wireless uh, RSC UOB very expensive, so experimentation is there. So I think uh, the alternatively my lab are working simulation based, realistic uh, laden model, fading model, try to figure out what is the limitation of the current yeah, the existing protocol. So 
That's why next slide, we try to come up with a new some approach for Lincoln model and the neighbor discovery mobility issue. So uh, we are working um, the simulation. So hopefully next, uh, the prior meeting, uh, I will bring my student to try to demonstrate what is the limitation of the existing protocol, what is uh, the our proposal, so at least the simulation. After that, we can uh, moving out the real implementation. I okay. believe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we can talk offline about ways possible to run experiments too. If... Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, any additional volunteer for reviewing the document? As we discussed, we need uh, two, three reviews before we even consider going for working group last call. So, we, we got two. Although one is from Charlie, that is, I just realized that is a contributor co author, but then. Anyway, that will be helpful. The other one is from Sri. And any other, any other volunteer? I recommend Zhong Hyo Lee. Zhong Hyo also, he's an expert. Uh, no, no, I'm, 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 oh, you're OK. OK, so <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. take it offline, but uh, you need to really find at least two more reviewers, OK? Yeah. OK. So then we move to next. One that is okay. Uh, this one is um, uh, try to um, come up with uh, some uh, possible uh, candidate for IP version six neighbor discovery for IP based uh, vehicular network. So the Zhang, Zhong Shang, uh, and the Chris uh, Shen are my uh, uh, student. So the introduction. So motivation of a vehicular neighbor discovery is uh, we need some uh, concrete some idea. So uh, I would say this is not uh, necessarily a solution, but uh, it can um, provide some guideline for our uh, further uh, the moving uh, places. So the subjects uh, handled by this uh, draft is definition of the link model for vehicular wireless links. Uh, secondly, uh, neighbor discovery optimization with multi hub DAD. And the third one is proactive handover with uh, virtual neighbor discovery in the mobility management. Uh, last one is a, a MAC address pseudonym handling. So, again, this is a, a picture you, uh, you understand, right? So, so we try to uh, provide the B2B and the B2Y consider a multi link subnet scenario. So. Uh, again, you can the vehicle is a register through RCU, and this address is actually register into mobility anchor. So this uh, link coverage case, the its neighbor cache entry having the vehicle's address information. Also, that address information is uh, delivered to a uh, mobility anchor. So uh, as a result, another vehicle try to register using. Um, this RC2 and R2 uh, try to register address here. If address com uh, conflict happened, which means the DAD failed, okay? It is called the multi hub DAD, and then notify, and then it try to notify, configure again, otherwise register. So in this mechanism, uh, we can provide the one shot DAD is enough, okay? And then it can moving out. So. Mobility point of view, we can use in the proxy mobile IP, it can handle. Okay. Okay, three. Yeah, so Paul, when you say register, is it like a proxy? What exactly is RS? What is the function? RSU, kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh, proxy. So let me show you this one. Uh -huh. This one. So the beaker uh sending other uh try to send the uh, NS with the address registration and then RSC receive. So first of all, it has a neighbor cache. It can cache its, uh, its address. And then using duplicate address restoration, this one has the DAD table, the register. Take a look at uh, its uh, um, DAD table. If it is a conflict case, this uh, duplicate address confirmation saying there is a conflict. Otherwise, uh, OK, it is OK. And then it can uh, acknowledge okay, the assignment. And then that is enough. Okay. So, so again, going back to my earlier comment, if you make look at RSC as an access point, right, mm -hmm. and essentially mobility anchor is like you know somewhat an aggregation gateway, like a wireless and controller, right? If you look at cap web architecture, mm -hmm. now if do you still need this kind of you know? So if now in that L two model, 
right? Mm -hmm. How is it impacting this call flow here? In other words, you know, keep everything, all the state on the mobility anchor. Mm -hmm. Make RSU more as L2 pipe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Between RSU and mobility anchor, it's just layer to pipe. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this impact your uh, scenario here? Mm -hmm. So you, your point is the mobility anchor is a kind of the some the bottleneck point. Try to using the DMN approach. No, no, forget about DMN and all of that. All I'm saying is RSU is just a L2, L2, L2. Oh, no. so currently, yeah, yeah uh, RSU. Uh, my assumption is RSU is a L3 as well. Uh, yeah, so depending on some, this is a, some just a switch case, probably some router. The yeah. behind the, the RSU, but the, my definition is RSU is the router. Yeah. yeah, see, if you deploy RSU every 300 meters, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm going at 90 kilometers per hour, I think this model may not work. I think we need to really, really think whether RSU is an IP node or an L2 node. And like, I think we need to look at the scenario. Maybe, you know, building a large L2 domain is one approach. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, but, but we need more discussion. Yeah, okay. I'm not quite, you know, understanding how it is solving the problem here, but uh, with respect to all the scenarios, but what we need to look at. Yeah, yeah okay. So, okay, go ahead, that's Yeah, uh, so uh, first to like make sure everybody understands, this is like a future proposed work item for this working group, right? So we really want our deliverables done before anything like this happens. And, and the second thing that I found confusing, I don't know if other people did, is the relationship between this draft and draft Jiang, right? And they're like kind of interrelated, but it's not like very clear how they're interrelated. So I, I would really recommend that uh, you try to put them together. So because I'm, I don't really understand why they're separate. Oh, the, okay. So actually okay. the Zhong is uh, my draft and the Xiang is my student. We, in the future, try to merge. At the moment, we take a uh, refer to some options, but in the revision case, we can merge. Okay? Right. So that, that that's the thing, because like uh, this one uses like, option definition yeah, for yeah. the other draft. And yeah, I had right, to go exactly. back and read it to make sure I understand. Right, yeah. So like, I think it's causes some confusion. So take care of that. Okay. But I, I would really like not discuss the details, just give up, like, you know, we don't have too much time, right? So just use the time to like, you know, provide like an elevator pitch, like two minutes of the thing and then. Okay, sure, okay, okay good, yeah. So I think that is uh, the main idea and that we can handle uh, pseudonym and the mobility, um, take advantage of uh, RSU. I explained the uh, problem statement of the document. So our uh, next uh, step is, uh, uh, as long, uh, once we uh, finish a uh, problem statement, we need to start a uh, neighbor discovery for B2B, B2I. That is uh, my intention, this document. So to prove of concept, uh, we implement, currently we are implementing right now, we finished up the basic neighbor discovery protocol implementation. Next step, we implement our proposal. So next, the hackathon project, uh, we try to come up with. So as a one information, I also leading some i 2 ns hackathon. We seven times hackathon. i 2 ns working with very energetic. We you can take a look at the working group, a lot of you know working draft. So more than uh, six or seventy percent of our uh, groups. So I want to bring in energy into this working group using the real working code. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Okay. One one question or comment regarding this uh, hackathon project. Um, uh, we are also aware that I think, Nabil, you have some implementation work going on, right? On the basic uh, IPv6 over OCV with some students. That's correct or not? So my, my question is, uh, if you do also, if you have also some implementation on the basic IPv6 over OCV stuff, because if that is the case, I think it will be very valuable if you go for this kind of hackathon where you do some interop tests on the basic draft that will be very helpful for that draft to to progress to understand what are the issues and then that will be also very helpful in understanding what are the potential things that need to be improved in a potential future work as uh, should as mentioned nothing will happen until we are really done with the main two documents mm -hmm. so I, I think we should focus on those two main documents so basically on the implementation of the over ocv basic stuff and, and that will be very, very helpful if you can do a hackathon kind of interop in the XITF. And if that's the case, we should prepare and advertise so many, maybe some other implementations or some other people can join. Okay. But I will make it, mainly meet the hackathon around the IPv6 over OCV main stuff. Okay. This is Nabil again. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, suggestion. We have indeed 
uh, in the 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 last uh, AS uh, African Internet Summit we have done a hackathon, and uh, there were uh, uh, three uh, tracks. One of them it was around uh, IP wave. So we brought uh, some uh, uh, network cards related to OCB, and uh, it was uh, 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 successful because we have been able to implement those cards in. Uh, uh, in Linux, turn the Linux, uh, recompile the, the, the kernel, etc., and make the ping between two, two, two nodes that they are uh, uh, virtual uh, vehicles because of uh, dot cards. And uh, we got some uh, good results. Yes. So, yeah, I would like to uh, collaborate with uh, the uh, Nabil's team and my uh, the lab, and uh, we can take leverage, right? And then we can uh, move out of uh, OCB first, maybe the neighbor discovery option, okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So let's move to the last one. Hi, uh, I'm Munira from uh, Telecom Paris Tech. Uh, I'm Just presenting you uh, today uh, the, the extension of uh, transport layer secure protocol to support uh, the vehicular uh, certificate, uh, HC and uh, IEEE certificate. So uh, the agenda of uh, this presentation, I will be uh, we start by describing our motivation, uh, use cases of uh, the extension, and uh, the extension, uh, how, how it works on TRS. So uh, cooperative intelligent transport system uh, are very, high, uh, very mobile, uh, highly mobile uh, system with limited bandwidth. That's why we are not using um, no one certificate and no one uh, security uh, uh, tools. Uh, that's why we are uh, using uh, size optimized certificate standardized by Etsy uh, and uh, IEEE. Uh, Etsy is 103097 and IEEE 1609.2. Uh, the HC1 is just a profile of the IEEE1, so it has the same, the same data structure. Our objective is to uh, make this authentication and uh, to define auto the authentic authentication method more optimized uh, for bandwidth and the processing time to support delay sensitive application and to enable client and server authentication in uh, CTS uh, network. Some use cases for this uh, extension is uh, the upload of vehicle data and uh, vehicle, uh, let's say, uh, log server to uh, log, for example, to upload it from vehicle to log server and uh, to update uh, vehicle software and uh, vehicle configuration also. We can use it also for to connect to make connection to cloud services connected infotainment, and also uh, to connect a client uh, vehicle to uh, to a company using uh, TLS servers like uh, rent company uh, rent company and car manufacturers and also wireless electrical the electric vehicle charging. Uh, the extension, how we make it really in TLS, it's just uh, adding a new certificate type to uh, existing types X509, public key, and the third one, it will be 1609.2. And to define its uh, structure, entry structure on, uh, on TLS. And here I'm describing an example of handshaking where the client, uh, the client is proposing to use uh, X1609.2 and the server, and uh, he uh, gives to the server the possibility to use one of uh, this uh, authentication method. The first one, X509, the second one is raw public key, and the third one is 1609.2. Uh, and so the client will keep his certificate 1609 dot two for authentication and the server will choose the default one which is 
X509 is a hybrid utilization of such certificate with X509. Uh, can I ask you one uh, basic question? So in dot two, 609.2, by default, there are how many certificates are there? So there's one from the OEM, right? Are there, is it the OEM certificate or which certificate? Can you provide some clarity on that? It, it has the same, it has uh, SNA uh, SNN data structure and inside it you can uh, define which profile you want to use. And ETSI is one profile on IEEE. So it's IEEE profile. Yes, or it's, it, let's say, uh, the general data structure is proposed by IEEE and ETSI and we can, you can profile just, uh, you can define a profile under this uh, general uh, structure. So within that profile, if it's an IEEE profile, is that like a manufacturer certificate or some other? Uh, it's, it's a, I mean, if, so it's a profile, so it's, uh, uh, we, we verify the certificate in the same way and we serve, it's, it's the same fields, just for example, on Etsy, uh, some fields are optional, are deactivated by default, and uh, on IEEE is more ge general, let's say, uh, definition. But uh, on the verification, you, we have to follow uh, the uh, algorithm, the verification algorithm of IEEE, even for its uh, certificate. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the profile, thanks. Yeah. So, uh, so here we uh, we define a new value referring to the IEEE certificate to add it to uh, the certificate type, uh, the client certificate type, and server certificate type as defined on latest uh, TLS RFC. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So with this, uh, we are done for the day. Thank you very much. Where, where are the blue sheets, by the way? Thank you. Thank you.